In this episode, new guests on the Max Verstappen podcast, the NASCAR playoffs continue in Texas, and Acura racing at Le Mans. Welcome to episode 273 of the We Are Auto Show. What's up, Derek? Mr. Michael Rowell. Lots of racing happened this past weekend. It did, and one that I was interested to watch was a race happening at one of my favorite tracks, Spa Francorchamps. Huh, I thought the, you were going to say Sebring. E, well, that too. Okay. <laughs> that did happen. Uh, the ELMS, the European Le Mans Series, was at Spa. Uh, that was surprisingly exciting, but also filled with a lot of cautions. A lot of chaos? I watched like the last 30 minutes of it, and as soon as I put it on, it was safety car. Within three laps, safety car again. Mm. Mm. Lots of safety car. But, quick little note. The blue right motorsports, well, I guess it's Proton technically, first form Porsche with Ryan Hardwick won. Zachary Robichon, yeah, they won. Sweet. So that series only has LMP2s as the top class. Uh, P2s, P3s, GTs. Ah, P3s are in there. Yeah, ah. P2, P3, GT. That's cool. GTE, technically. I I wonder why there's not more endurance series for the LMP3 cars. I don't know, because it's mostly dentists, and dentists can't afford to take that much time off. Yes, yes, yes. There's the meme. I understand that. But those cars actually race relatively well for endurance stuff. They do seem to. Yeah. Uh, if they can do 12 hours of Sebring, they can kind of do 24 anywhere they want it. And they they can do, do a 12 of Sebring, a 24 Daytona. They can do Petit Le Mans. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah. Then, let's race these guys more. Right. I, I totally agree. So let's talk about uh, F1. There's a couple different races we're going to talk about. Well, let's kick it off with F1 okay. because they were over in Japan for the Japanese Grand Prix at Suzuka. Which I did not stay up to watch because for us in the eastern U.S. time zone, it was 1 a.m. Yeah, I watched uh, none of it live, but I watched the, the replay of it. Uh, and it was a somewhat entertaining race boring if you wanted to watch the front perspective because max kind of just pulled away and did what max does and mm-hmm. he won the race by 20 seconds and he just yeah whatever i think he took singapore personally uh i don't know i can't i don't know why they struggled so bad at singapore that track just has red bull's number i guess yeah uh but clearly this is a more open classic f1 circuit that they dominate at and they continue to do so yes now the squabbling back in the pack was the entertaining bit uh checo was just absolutely murdering people just wrecking ball perez per usual at the moment i the past two races he is driving like a, an idiot he is uh i would not be surprised if he's out of red bull at the end of the season i mean he's legitimately driving like a knob yeah and i don't know who would replace him i don't know how that's gonna go but <clears throat> liam lawson really think so mm. how sick would that be I, I'd be okay with it, but I don't see it happening. It won't happen. No, no. What about Carlos Sainz? Yeah, like realistically, I could see Sainz, Leclerc. I think Leclerc just renewed his contract. Uh, I don't know. Fernando? Nah. No Logan way. Sargent. No, there's no way. No. Uh, Actually, anyway. side note. Have you seen the memes about not the F1 Constructors Championship, but the F1 Destructors Championship? <laughs> Who has caused the most amount of monetary damages? <laughs> Logan no. Sargent is winning at like $2.7 million worth of damages. Oh, man. Really? I think very shortly followed by Lance Stroll, like $2.5 million or something oh like that. Oh, my God. That's crazy. I'm not shocked that it's Lance Stroll. I, he, he should be out of this series a long time ago. But daddy money. Anyway, uh, this... <laughs> <laughs> okay. This race in general, as far as the back markers went, was entertaining to watch, which was pretty darn cool. And uh, Mercedes tried to do, uh, tried to get up there and tussle it out for second place, but proceeded to have the problem that Mercedes always has, where they didn't exactly learn from the last race, where they ran the DRS train in front of the two Mercedes to not allow them to catch up, remember? Yep. There was a situation where the Mercedes could have run the DRS train to not allow other people to catch up or to go catch up other people, and instead they forced Russell to get overtaken by Hamilton, by, like, team orders, and then up comes the Ferrari, and the Ferrari passes both of them, and yada, yada, and they just didn't learn. It was like, what are we doing? The last race that happened, 
the same exact situation played out, and they goofed it up. Then this race, the same situation. <laughs> so is Mercedes and Ferrari on equal parts of stupid strategies? I I think so, dude. Like, do they correspond together? I think so. And, like, what would make the least amount of sense here? I, Perez is just like, I'm going to go crash people. Mercedes and Ferrari just roll the dice on strategy and just, like, throw darts at a dartboard. Yeah. McLaren has been okay. They've actually been doing decently. Can we talk about that? Yeah. Since when has McLaren been doing this? Uh, McLaren's doing pretty darn good. I think uh, Lando P2'd at this race, did Lando P2, and guess who was P3? Who? Oscar Piastri. Exactly. That was a McLaren double podium. That's huge for them. Are you serious? Yeah, they're, what? they're kicking butt right now. McLaren? Okay, so I don't have stats from earlier in the season, but McLaren is coming from a long way back. With their points. They're nowhere near constructors, obviously. But they are now 172 points, closing quickly on Aston, Ferrari, and Mercedes. Oh. McLaren was 172 points. Aston's 221. Ferrari's 285. Mercedes, 305. So if they keep having races like this where they're getting P2, P3, P2, P4, P3, P5, and Mercedes keeps doing not brilliantly... That could be a battle towards the last part of the season for, like, P3 constructors. Right. Realistically, they could actually get a constructors championship. I don't think – I think P2 is out of, out of the realm right now. But, yeah, I agree. P3 or 4, and they're currently fifth, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's that's darn good for them. Especially considering – remember how McLaren started the season? Uh, Yeah, it was in shambles. Horrible. Yeah. The car was really slow. The drivers hated it. It was one of the worst cars in the grid. It was bad. Yep. No, they've turned it around. Yeah. Uh, suggestion: Don't go rewatch this race. It wasn't. It wasn't worth it. <laughs> yeah, it's. It's boring. Max just did Max things, and yeah, he sauntered he off into the distance. He won by nineteen point three eight seven seconds. It's. Uh, have you noticed? It's always between twenty and thirty seconds. Yes. Like that. That is the perfect gap where he pushes far enough ahead. Nobody strategy wise can get to him and like do some undercut or some 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 silliness. But it's not far enough ahead that they have to push the engine and the tires and like wreck components. Yeah, they just get enough of a gap and then just say, okay, we'll just sit here for a bit. Yeah, do a little lift and coast and then Mm -hmm. just hang out. Yep, it was a classic. Yep. Yeah. So that was F one. Oh, what was the podium? Max Norris Piastri. Yes. So let's kick it over to NASCAR because they Mm. were over in Texas, which is a classic mile and a half circuit, uh, an oval, a high banked oval. Uh, And I don't think it's as gripped up as Atlanta is. Atlanta, for instance, can basically be like pack racing. Uh, You're almost flat out the whole time at Atlanta, which is kind of wild. This track is not as gripped, so you do have to do some braking into the corners. You have to lift and stuff. Uh, makes for more of a classic kind of NASCAR style of racing, which is mm-hmm. good. Uh, and reminder, we're in the playoffs here, which yeah. is uh, entertaining because it does mean that currently 12 drivers are eligible mm-hmm. to move on, or eight drivers are going to move on to the next round in the playoffs. But this was race one of three, and after the these three races happen, four drivers will be cut, so it will be down to eight. It's yeah. currently at 12 that are in the playoffs. Now, yes. uh, there was a couple notables. Uh, Kyle Busch had a big old crash. Yeah. He's one of the playoff drivers. Uh, I believe that Kyle Larson had a big old crash. Mm, He's one yep. of the playoff drivers. Uh, Bubba Wallace was doing really, really good for a long time. He was one of the playoff drivers. I think he had a pretty good finish. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and then Mr. William Byron won the race, and he's he also did. a playoff driver. Yes. So that locks William Byron, if we go over to the uh, standings here, that locks him in for moving on. So he's guaranteed to move on. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> if we look down here on the bubble drivers, so there's still two races to go before the cut happens, but we have Bubba Wallace, Tyler Reddick, Ryan Blaney, and Kyle Busch. Mm-hmm. So Bush, those four basically have to have good races the next two races. Yeah. Or they're in big trouble. Yeah, they got to have a really good race the next few races. Mm-hmm. Yep. We'll see how it ends up going for them. Uh, do you know what the next two races are? 
Uh, well, I know this weekend they're going to be at Talladega. <laughs> oh, baby. <laughs> okay. So roll the dice. I see. It's going to be a little wild. It's pack racing in NASCAR. You roll the dice. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be wild. All right. Well, uh, good luck to them. We'll see how that goes. And then after that, uh, I don't know where they're at after that. Uh, I think it was Charlotte or something like that. I think so. Um, yeah. yeah. Whatever. Uh, real quick, your podium for NASCAR, you had William Byron, Ross Chastain, then Bubba Wallace. Okay. Solid. Solid podium. Mm-hmm. So uh, let's kick it over to a little bit of uh, interesting news that has come out of Acura. Well, Acura Honda? slash Honda. Of all the teams? Yes. So recently, there's been a bit of a merger or a new found deal and link up in partnership between U.S. Honda Performance Development and then the Jap- Japanese side of Honda, the Honda Racing Corp- Corporation. Mm-hmm. They have joined forces. So HPD does not exist anymore. Oh. It is now HRC US. That's a terrible acronym. It is. Okay. Honda Racing Corporation US. But I think I see why they're doing this. And this article is painting a possible picture. Honda seriously evaluating WEC program with their new prototype. Okay. Mm. Good. Good, good, good. So... Wayne Taylor Racing and Andretti have been eyeing some Lamal, haven't they? I don't know why this took so long. Yeah, because convergence should have been a thing last year. Yeah, that was the whole idea. Mm-hmm. So apparently, I mean, Wayne Taylor and Mike Andretti, they've had some serious thinkings of wanting to run not just Lamal, but the WEC, the World Endurance Championship. Mm-hmm. That would be good. Right. You look over at Chip Ganassi, right? They're running the two Cadillacs in IMSA and then one Cadillac over in the WEC. Uh, what's another team that's going between the two? Penske. Yeah, with the Porsches, right? Mm-hmm. But then there's not a lot of other teams. Correct. Which is kind of surprising. Because you got Toyota staying in the WEC, not going mm-hmm. to IMSA. You got Ferrari staying in the WEC, not going to IMSA. You got Peugeot staying in the WEC, not going to IMSA. Mm. Lamborghini rumors... Lamborghini will be, be both. Yeah, but that's not here yet. Right, could be doing both. Uh, but if you think about the four manufacturers that are in IMSA's top class right now, which is this the Acura, Porsche, Cadillac, uh, and BMW. BMW doesn't have a WEC program, which is a bit odd to me. Yep. Uh, no, they don't. They uh, are rumored to be starting as well. Cadillac does. Acura seems to be going there, and then Porsche also does. So, hmm. Hmm. So, at Le Mans, that's going to be a big top class Mm -hmm. that's going to be freaking huge and we're supposed to be getting lamborghini we're supposed to be getting isada fracini thingy Mm -hmm. linguini in there at one point (laughs) yep uh and i think that's it i can't as of now yeah but if you think you've got accurate well bmw is also supposed to be coming possibly i've heard probably okay so at potentially accurate bmw Cadillac, Porsche, yeah. Isada, Glickenhaus, Toyota, Ferrari, Peugeot, Ferrari, Ferrari. Yep. Van Wall. Did I say Lamborghini already? Yep. Did I? Yep. Okay. We're at, what, 11? Yeah. It's like 10 plus manufacturers. Yeah. That's a huge top class. That is a lot. And I, I wonder... Uh, Porsche is kind of an odd one there because they had what four cars at Le Mans, like two customer teams, two. No, they had one customer team, three factory teams. Oh, three fact. Oh, okay. All right, well, four cars regardless. Uh, so if each team normally would bring two cars, probably to Le Mans, one or two cars, right? Porsche being the odd man out, where they bring mm. a whole bunch. Yeah, but no, I think Cadillac. How many did Cadillac? They brought bring? three. Yeah, yeah. So I, I know <laughs> it's. It's going to be a massive top class. We're talking like 20 plus cars. Yeah. Yeah. If you average two cars per manufacturer on average, that's 20 cars. I know. Yep. What? Mind you, 
I started for Chini. Probably won't bring two cars. I'm sure Glickenhaus won't bring two cars. Although yes, they but did. yeah, they did. They did. But you can account for the lack of their cars with the surplus of Porsches <laughs> yes. and Cadillacs and right. all the other ones. I wonder if Acura will bring two to Le Mans. What do you think? Because mm. they have they they have two in IMSA, right? Well, two different Acura teams. does, but they're different teams. Yes. So would they bring two? No. I think it's only one. I think it'd only be the Wayne Taylor Racing one. I think you're right. Which is a little sad to me, but this is what it is. It's more of it's probably more of a financial decision from the other teams. Yeah. Yeah. So. But more the chap more. The other one's what? My Meyer Shank? Yeah. 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 I The uh, Rolex cheaters. Yes. Would they go to Le Mans? I don't know, maybe. I'm sure Shank wants to go to Le Mans. Do you, you think he imagine. does? Yeah, you got to imagine. If you're if you're that into the sport, you want to go to every race you possibly can. Financially, can you? Mm, that's a different story. Mm. Le Mans is expensive. V- very. Very. <laughs> Not as expensive as F1, but very. It's the WEC in general is just, yeah. Yeah. So, cool news. I'm glad to see that Acura is actually probably going to Le Mans. Yeah. In the WEC. Cool to see convergence actually happening. Mm-hmm. Hmm. So, that's really all I got for news. That's all I got, buddy. So, upcoming races. There's not a lot happening. Oh, really? This weekend, NASCAR Talladega. No F1 until the following weekend. Right. No IMSA until Petit Le Mans the weekend after. Mm-hmm. No WEC until November 4th. Yep. And then I know SRO just raced over at Sebring, uh, which I wish I would have gone because it looked like some good racing. Mm-hmm. Uh, but... I don't think that they're racing, at least in the in the U.S. stuff, for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, I think you're right. There's not really a lot happening this weekend. No. Next I'll watch few some, weeks. some bump drafting at Talladega, baby. Yeah. <laughs> That'll be fun. Yes, it will. Crash fest. So that's all we got for episode 273. Thanks so much for watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe, drop a comment. Let us know. What do you think about this whole new... Uh, hypercar convergence with acura honda hrc us whatever you want to call it be curious to know what you think there and uh, if you're listening on audio only send us those thoughts via social facebook is we are auto instagram is we are auto underscore youtube is we are auto and our website is we are auto.io so thanks again catch you guys the next one peace